are you? It's Walter Peters here, and you're here at the Naked Forex webinar today. I'd like to welcome all of you who have made it, and of course, welcome also those of you watching the, the uh, recording. Thanks for spending time here. I see Doug is here, and George, Joe, of course, Black Cat, B Winner, Mats, J Trader 71, Linda. Linda, I'm glad that you got sorted today. Michael, Phil, hold. Susan, will you be mine? <laughs> Probably hear that all the time. So it's great to see everyone here, uh, George and Joe. So what we're going to talk about today is going to be good fun. I'm excited. I think this is one of those, um, Noel, welcome, and RP, welcome. Um, it's going to be one of those webinars where you, you won't look at the charts again the same way if you start to really jump into this stuff. And what's cool about trading naked or trading price action or trading based on candlestick formations is that you can't really get away from it. And that's, and that's really, I don't have anything against indicators. I think there are a lot of great traders who use indicators um, and clearly are happy with that. But I think a couple of things. I think if pressed, most of those traders will admit to you that they actually probably could trade without their indicators, that they're just used to seeing the market through those indicators, and that they could probably trade and, and do just, just fine without those indicators that they become so used to. And the second and more important thing, from my point of view, is that by avoiding indicators, what we do is we don't give ourselves any more excuses. We can't say, oh, it's that dosh, gosh darn MACD. Oh, it's the bloody stochastic that gave me another losing trade. What happens when we, when we move to price action is we always see it. You'll always see it once you see it, and you can't get away from it. And to me, that's the real value in trading price action. So let's today talk about the seven ways that you can read price action and listen to what the market is telling us simply by looking at these seven things. Okay, so the first thing that I want to look at and the first thing that's important is, of course, the closing price. And this is the closing price relative to the high or low of the candlestick, all right? So let's, let's talk about this. Let's, I mean, I'm on the pound cat, but it really doesn't matter the chart that I'm, I'm looking at. If we're looking at this, if we're looking at this candle right here, this big giant blue candle right here, and we see that the closing, let me mark it, it's this one right here, and we see that the closing price is all the way up here. So I can see on this candle, the closing price is 1.5615. The high is 1.5649, right? Now, that might not seem like it's very close. You might say, well, the fact that the high is 56.49 and the close is 56.15, well, it's really pretty far away. It's 34 pips away. That's far. But then when you consider that the candle is so large and started all the way down at 54.34 and actually had a low of 54.22, what you see here is a close that is, is near the high and is telling us something. And what is it telling us if we listen? It's telling us that the market is strong, that the bulls are in control. At least for this candle, the bulls won. And really, that's what every candle tells you. This candle over here is the opposite. The close of this candle is almost right on the low. The low is 51515 and the close was 55.18, so three pips higher than the low, right on the low. What does that tell us there? That the bears are in control, that the sellers are in control, that what's happening here is that the strength of the market is held by the sellers. The sellers are winning out here. And so that closing price 
is very critical. But you can't just use the closing price. What you have to use is the closing price and compare it to the high or the low. Now, if we look at a candle like this little one, let me mark it. This little sucker right here, that one has a closing price at 1.5458 and a high at 54.71 and a low at 54.41. It almost closes right in the middle of the candle. In other words, it didn't tell us anything. If you think of each candle as telling us whether or not the sellers or the buyers won, when you look at this candle right here, even though it is blue, so it's a bullish candle, but it doesn't tell us much. We're going to get more into this idea of wicks and little candles and all that sort of thing. But right now, when we're looking at the close, we know that a close near the low tells us the sellers won that battle for that time frame, which in this case was a four-hour chart, four hours. It took four hours to find a winner, and the winner on this candle was the bulls or the buyers. The winner on this candle here, after four hours, was the sellers. And the winner on this candle right here was actually nobody. <laughs> that was a tie. And uh, the tie goes to no one in trading. So basically, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the closing price. The closing price relative to the higher low. Are there any questions about this concept? The idea is that we want to know what's strong here. And if you are familiar with your indicator formulas, you will know that the relative strength index certainly does use the closing price uh, very strongly. In other words, if you trade with an RSI, with a relative strength index, you're trading with the closing price. Because what the relative strength index do does is it looks at the number of X number of closes, like the last 14 closes, and it compares it how many of them were up closes and how many of them were down closes, how many bullish candles and how many were bearish candles. And that's basically what it's giving you, that when it's spitting out that line on the RSI, that's what it's doing. Stochastic, what does the stochastic calculate? Well, stochastic compares the most recent close on the chart, the, the candle that just closed, to the last X number of highs and X number of lows. You can change the setting so it's the last nine highs and the last nine lows, the last six highs, the last six lows, the last 13 highs, the last 13 lows, whatever. But it's comparing the most recent close to the highs and the lows. That's what your stochastic does. So all of these indicators, sometimes we forget what they're telling us. And really what they're telling us is what the price action shows us on the candlesticks. It's just in a different form. Uh, Jano says, let's see, let's see another bullish example. Yeah, well, let's, let's take any other chart. How about the euro? I know the euro is a pretty good one for people. Check this out. We recently had this sucker right here. In fact, we were talking about this, I think, um, today in a webinar, earlier today, or yesterday if you're in Europe. And what does this candle tell us? The fact that the market rocketed up here and closed up near the high, that's the bulls are in control. Same thing here. The bulls are in control. What do these candles tell us? Well, not much because they didn't close right on the low. They were little tiny candles. This one right here is, is an okay candle. But whenever we see a candle where you see it goes all the way up, closes right on the high or really close to it, the bulls are in control there, right? And what about this candle right here? What does this tell us? This red candle, the bears were in control here. It closed right on the low. The low was 1.2798. The close was 1.28. Okay, two pips higher. Actually, it's 1.3 pips higher if you want to get really sticky about it. And what happened on the next candle? It went down. So that's what we're talking about when we're comparing the close relative to the high or the low. So there you go. There's some more examples here. There's another bullish close right there. There's a pretty good bearish close right there. It could be a little bit better. Uh, there's a nice bearish close right there. There's a brilliant bearish close right there, right on the low, I believe. 29.97, 29.97. Yep, it did close right there on the low. So that's what I'm talking about. That's the first principle, comparing the close to the high or to the low. That's going to tell us what? What is that going to tell us? I'm not 
Um, yeah. Black Cat's asking, so you're looking at the size of the wick. I almost said that I'm not looking at the size of the wick, but in fact, you can use the wick as a proxy for this. So you're right, Black Hat. What you could say, another way of saying this, is candles where the close is near a very, very tiny wick, those tell us the strength of the market, right? So what does the close tell us relative to the high or the low? It tells us the strength. The strength in the market. Is it with the bears, the, the sellers, or the bulls, the buyers? So yes. So the, the tinier the wick on the side of the close. It's not on the open. So, so for example, you look at this candle right here. See this red candle? See how it doesn't have a wick on the bottom? Um, that means it's a really strong bearish candle because it basically closes right on the, on the low. Now, the size of the candle and the placement and all that, we'll talk about that stuff later. But the important thing here is that, you know, there, there's no wick that down there by the close. Now, you look at this candle before it, this blue candle, this bullish candle, there's actually a very, very tiny wick on this candle right here. But because the close is on the other side of the candle, we don't really count this wick. That wick's not important. The, the wick that's important is the one that's on the side of the close. So if it's a bullish candle, the close is higher, the wick on top is important. And if it's a bearish candle where the market closes lower, the wick at the bottom is important. So in this blue bullish candle right here, let me mark it. The most important thing about this candle right here is the wick on the upside. And you see, it basically, the market basically closed at the midpoint or even slightly below. So it's deceiving because you look at this here, well, it's a blue candle, it's a bullish candle and all that. Not really, not really because it closed down near the middle. It didn't close up near the high, so I would say that's a, a very weak looking candle. And you can see that the market actually went down on the next candle and then it went down even further the next week. But that is an example of strength of market. And we see that not by using the RSI, not by using the stochastic, but by comparing the close to the high or the close to the low. Okay? Hey, Clever is asking if the one-hour charts can do this as well. Absolutely. It doesn't really matter if we're looking at one-hour or four-hour or whatever. I'm just... I'm just looking at principles here. And these principles are when the market closes down near the low, like this candle, we know the bears are in control. And when the market closes up here on the high, like on this candle, we know the bulls are in control. Of that one hour, this is the CAD yen now that we're looking at, but of that one hour chart, you can see that yes, the bulls are in control. Okay, so how do we know the trend has changed? That's actually, we've talked about that in another webinar pan, uh, but we will actually talk a little bit about that today. So hold, hold on and we will, we will definitely get in on this. Okay. So that's number one, the close relative to the high or the low. That tells us the strength of the market. All right. Number two is, and this is going to answer, par partly answer your question, pan. Number two is, where are the swing highs? Where are the swing lows? Okay? Now, what is a swing high and what's a swing low? Well, the important thing here is to, to basically define it. Um, there are different ways of defining your swing highs and your swing lows, but this, the simplest way to look at it is you look for a candle that has lower candles on both sides, and that's a swing high. So let's let's look at this one right here, okay? This candle right here, this little blue candle right there, that's a swing high. Why is that a swing high? Because if you look to the left, those candles don't go as high as this candle did. And if you look to the right, those candles um, also don't go as high as this one did. So this was sort of the peak candle. You can think of it as a little mountain peak. That's what a swing high is. Now, some people will define them and say, well, there has to be at least two 
lower candles to the left of a swing high and two lower candles to the right of the swing high, and then we know it's a swing high. The problem with that, of course, is that we don't know it's a swing high until the second candle after the swing high prints. And that's why some of you might use indicators that repaint. This is often the culprit. An indicator will repaint when it's identifying a swing high or swing low because it doesn't really know it's a swing high or swing low until the next candle prints. Now, you might use one candle on the left and one candle on the right to define your swing high. You might use five candles on the left and five candles on the right. It doesn't really matter what you would use in this case. Uh, if you use ten candles to the left and ten to the right, what you would notice here is that this candle is indeed a swing high. Okay? So, this swing high is right here. Now, over here, this candle is actually a swing low. Why is this candle a swing low? Because if we look to the left, we see one, two, three, four, five candles. So if we were counting, you know, five candle swing, swing lows, all of these candles are higher than this candle is right here. So this candle right here is definitely a swing low. And if we look here, all of these candles are higher than this swing low. They don't make a lower low than this candle. So this is definitely a swing low. So a swing low is simply a candle that stabs low enough so that it is lower than X number of candles to the left and X number of candles to the right. In this case, uh, we could go back all the way to roughly this candle and still identify this candle as a swing low. Now, you will also see these point out in the line chart. I'm, if you've been at the Naked Forex webinar, you know I'm a big fan of the line chart. You can see that here, swing low, swing high. Okay. So that, that's out of the way, the definition of a swing high and swing low. Does that make sense to everybody? If there are any questions about that, just let me know. Pan says, great. Yes, boy, guys and gals, of course. Excellent. So everyone's clear on that. Great. Okay, so that's pretty simple, right? It's a simple idea, but some people forget that you, you actually define a swing high or swing low by the candles surrounding that candle, okay? All right. Now, so this principle is where are the swing highs, where are the swing lows? If the swing highs are going higher and higher and the swing lows are going higher and higher, then we know we're in an uptrend. So here's another swing high right here. This candle right here, this blue one that closes almost on the high, it went as high as 97.17, and this one over here didn't go as high. It went as high as 97.13. So 97.17 is four pips higher than this one, and this candle right here after it also didn't go as high. It only went as high as 97.12, and again, this candle marked with the arrow, it went as high as 97.17. So we would call this another swing high. We had a swing high here, a swing low here. Swing high here. Now we're looking for our next swing low, which is, in fact, this one right here. What we can say about this market here, uh, and then also, actually, you would have to, um, you would also have to take into account this candle right here. Um, and depending on your definition of a swing low, you might also have another swing low actually right here on this little tiny baby candle. But um, if you look at the line chart, you'll see bend, bend, bend. Okay. All right. So as long as I'm making out this, um, this definition right here, this swing low, that's sort of debatable here. Uh, but certainly this would count as a swing high unless we're counting more than, say, six candles to the left and six candles to the right. Um, if that were the case, then we'd have to identify this one right here as a swing high. The point is that the lows are getting higher, and the highs are also getting higher. So here's a high, here's a high, here's a high, here's a low, here's a low, and actually, we also have a low right here, and it goes higher as well. So what we can say about this market is that our swing highs are going, actually, I think this red candle is the swing high here. Yes, it is. What we can say here is that the swing highs are going 
higher and the swing lows are going higher. That's the definition, my friends, as you know, of an uptrend. Now, what about the recent price action? Well, actually, we might have to say that it's starting to slow down. If we identify this as a swing low, and if we identify this as a swing high, we would actually start to say that actually this low here, 96.99, and this low here, 97, it actually went one pip lower on this swing low, and this swing high also is lower than this swing high. So what's happening here is that it appears as though the market is slowing down. So why is it important to look at where the highs are and where the lows are, where the swing highs are and where the swing lows are? Because we want to know if, where the market's traveling. If the highs are going higher and the lows are going higher, it's an uptrend. If the highs are going lower and the lows are going lower, it's a downtrend. What happens if the highs and the lows are about the same spot? And that's basically what we have right here. This swing high here is at 97.84. This swing high here is at 97.99, 15 pips apart on a one hour chart. This swing low here and this swing low here are one pip apart. So they're basically equal. What we can say about that is that we are in essence in a trending, in a, a, tr a directionless range. And until we break out of it, and that's why we can draw a box around it. And last week's session was all about drawing boxes. I'm not going to get into it today. But the basic idea here is that some people will identify a directionless market by swing highs and swing lows, and other people will identify a directionless market by boxes. And they're both right, right? Both traders are right. It's just a different way of looking at the same thing. So in this case here, I've got swing highs and swing lows that are about the same spot. So what I can say here is the swing highs are not going higher, and the swing lows are not going higher. And likewise, the swing highs are not really going lower, and the swing lows are not really going lower. We need more information here to see if the market's going to break out of this box and go higher or lower. So at this case, in this case, um, at the very least, the market's resting in the midst of, a, of an uptrend. And perhaps it's even starting a retracement or uh, perhaps a downtrend. You know what I mean? Because we are in consolidation phase. So that's really what this is telling us. It tells you, the market's trying to tell you here that the market is going up, it's going down, or it's going nowhere. And what I can say about this one hour CAD yen chart is that it's going nowhere. That's what this is telling us. And that's why we pay attention to the swing highs and swing lows. So that's number two. Does that make sense to everybody? Are there any questions about number two? Awesome, George. Great, Ian. Glad to hear it, Boyke. Okay, Pan. Black Cat says it's all clear. Great. Let's move on to number three. Okay. I hope I get through all these. Number three uh, is the... Let's actually look at... Um, actually, I want to look at the Aussie Swiss. Yeah. Okay. This is the Aussie Swiss four-hour chart. And the reason why this is going to make a good example is because our next principle is talking about the height of the candle relative to previous candles. So... If we compare, for example, um, this candle here, this big red candle right here, compared to previous candles, um, what's the height or the range of the candle? How long is the candle, in other words? So the range of the candle range of the candle relative to nearby or previous candles, okay? So the range of the candle relative to nearby candles. What is this telling us? It's telling us volatility. If the range of the candle is, um, is, is wider than the previous candles, then the market's volatile, okay? So... For example, let's take a look at, you know what, actually, 
Um, okay, let's let's look at the one that we have right here. So this candle right here is 42 pips. The previous candle is 17 pips, and the candle before that is 30 pips. Okay, 13, 17, 43. You know, you have a. Uh, it's all between. You know, basically between 17 and, and 40 pips. This candle right here is 86 pips. What does that tell us? It tells us the market is getting volatile. It doesn't have to close. This candle also happens to close rather bearish. But that's not critical for this. It's just the size of the candle, the range. Here's another one. Okay, This candle right here, this, I'm going to look at the previous three, ca uh, three candles. This candle here is 31 pips. This candle here is 40 pips, and this candle here is 40 pips. 40, 40, and 31 pips, okay? Three candles. And then all of a sudden we get this sucker. This candle right here is actually 63 pips. So it's roughly 33% bigger than the biggest candle we've seen in the last three candles. That tells us that the market's getting volatile, okay? If the recent candle is much larger and has a wider range than the previous candles, previous three candles, previous five candles, whatever you want to look at, you know the market's getting volatile. If, however, the previous candle, and this is what we have right now on this pair, uh, or if the current candle is has a smaller range than the previous candle. Now, the reason why this candle is so tiny is because it's only been trained for 28 minutes, uh, and it's a four-hour candle. But that's okay. Look at the one before it. This candle traded for four hours, and look what it did. It didn't go anywhere. It had a high at 98.03 and a low at 97.78. Well, that's roughly 25 pips. 25 pips in four hours. That's how far the Aussie Swiss went. What does that tell us? It tells us the market is not volatile. The market's not going anywhere. There's no volatility in the market. That's what it told us. Now, look at this candle right here. Compare this candle. That candle is even tinier. It has a high of 86, 97, 86, and a low of 68. I mean, that's less than 20 pips. That's 18 pips. An 18 pip for our candle. So what does that say? What is that telling us? Yeah, including the wicks. That's right. It's the whole candle here. That tells us that the market's coiling up. It's getting ready to explode. That's why people who trade inside candles love inside candles. Because they know when a candle is inside of the previous candle, like this one is right here, this candle has a, low, a higher low and a lower high than the previous candle. So I'll say that again. An inside candle has a higher low and a lower high than the previous candle. That means that the market's coiling up. And we also had one right here. We had another candle that was inside the previous candle. It has a lower high and a higher low. It's inside that previous candle, so it's coiling up. The market's getting ready to explode. We don't know when it's going to happen, but remember, when we get these, we know... It's likely to happen. Here's one right here. This candle is inside of the previous candle. It has a lower high, a higher low. The market goes down a little bit, goes up a little bit, goes down a little bit, and then, boom, it just really moves. And that is what these ranges tell us. If the range is expanding and getting a, a larger and the candle is getting bigger, then there's more volatility in the market. And when the range contracts and the candle gets smaller and the range tightens up, there's less volatility. And it's just like the tides, right? The tide goes from high tide to medium tide to low tide, back to medium tide, back to high tide. Same thing in the markets. You go through these volatile spiky periods followed by resting and then more volatility. And it happens all the time. So... That's the third principle. Any questions about that? It's just basically looking at your candles and comparing them to the previous candles, knowing that if we see a large candle compared to the last three candles, for example, we know that it's getting more volatile. What does that mean? It means get ready. We're really going to go for a move here. What happens when the market starts to tighten up? It doesn't go anywhere. 
same thing. Telling him the same thing. Get ready. There's, it's not going anywhere now, but it will very soon. It's going to explode. And there are many um, patterns to um, trade off of those. Okay, number four. The fourth thing that we, what we can do when we're reading price action, when we're looking at trading naked off the charts without any indicators, is we can look at the candle body. Now, what does the size of the candle body tell us? We recently had a chart here. This was the um, euro. The euro came down to this area of support and resistance, and it bounced really hard here, and it has a huge body with little tiny wicks here. What would that tell us? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a new thing on here. What is the answer? So when we see a large candle with a, uh, a large body, what does that tell us? Any guesses? What do we know when we see a giant candle? Now remember, this candle here, this candle right here, is larger than all of these little baby candles. We'd have to go all the way back. I think it's even bigger than this one. Let me see. 105 pips? Yeah, it sure is. Because this candle is 113, 114 pips. Yeah. It's telling us that, um, well, the size of the candle is telling us about volatility. It's also telling us that the bears are in control, that's very right, or the bulls are in control, that's, that's very right, black cat. What I like to um, look at here on, on these candles, the reason I like to look at the size of the candle is because I am looking for volume. Big orders, when we see big candles, that means big orders are coming in. And big orders can be contagious. When many traders or large orders come in and buy the euro up here, other ones start to kick in too, automatically, often without any human intervention. And what that means is, what that means is, the market is going to move up because all of this, even though the market went straight up here and tagged the support and resistance level right here, it didn't close above it. It closed right on the lows over here. It closed right there. Even though it did that, guess what? It still went higher later. So when we see a giant candle body with uh, little tiny wicks on there, it's telling us that volume has come in, that large candles tell us that large orders are there. And large orders can become contagious. So when we see these giant big candles here, it's very, very critical. And you're going to see it on... Um, on, you'll see it on any market, but uh, here's another one right here. Big, huge candle. Look at all these little tiny candles before it. A little one there, a little one there, a little one, little one, little one, little one, little one. And that's not actually a medium one. That's a medium one, medium one, two little ones, a big one. But as soon as this big one comes in, that's volume. That pushed right up the same, almost exact same thing as we saw before, but in reverse. The market pushed right into this support and resistance level stopped on a dime, right where these lows were, right where these market touched here, right where all these candles couldn't get through. That's at 34.73. And then finally the next candle it pushed through. So large candle bodies equals strength. It means volume. It means big orders are coming in. So that's the fourth thing that we look at, which is the size of the candle body. Are you joking, Michael? <laughs> I've never heard that before. That's awesome. I love, I love to hear. Uh, Michael says, "I think that particular candle is called a draggy candle." That's awesome. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so let's keep going. Let's go to number five now. The fifth thing that we can do when we're reading price action, when we're trading uh, naked is we can look at the distance between the current candle and the previous candles. Now, uh, in the case of the euro, this is actually really good because we have a great example right here. So let me say that again and let me say it in another way. The distance between 
the current candle, right, and the previous candles. That's go what is that going to tell us? Any guesses on this one? If the current candle is far from the previous candles and prints away from the previous candles, what does that say? What does that tell us? Why is that important? A gap, says Boyke. Yeah, it could gap, but it doesn't necessarily have to gap. Like, for example, uh, this candle right here, right here, look how much, you've heard me in other webinars talk about this idea of space. Look how much of this giant bullish can this candle here, it's actually, it's, it's not really that bullish because it closed sort of down here and below this support resistance level, but the important thing to me, and this is how you can see it visually on the chart. If you're a visual learner, this is going to be important to you to, to see this right here. What you will see is this much of the candle printed on a unique area of the chart. Okay? See what I've done here? What I've done is I've taken this segment of the candle. So this part of the candle from the low up to here, I've disregarded. That's 39 pips, right? I've disregarded 39 pips of our candle. The other 77, 78 pips, I've actually extended to the left. And the reason I've done that is because I can say that when the market printed this candle right here, there were no other candles in the way of this part of the candle. For 78 pips of the candle, uh, which is roughly two-thirds of the candle, a little bit more than that, actually. A little bit more than two-thirds of the candle printed on an area in the chart where we don't see any recent price action. We have to go all the way back to uh, March 25th over here to see some recent price action there. What does that tell us? It's telling us exactly, Pan, you are spot on, that price is moving away from the level. It's telling us that price is moving away. What, what do we say? What do we call it when price is moving away? If price is moving up, 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 and away, or if it's going down, 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 and away, what do we say that is? Yeah, it's a breakout. It's a breakout. It's a trend. It's an expansion. It's a run. Whatever you want to call it, that's what it is. And so if the current candle prints away from the recent candles, that's the definition of a breakout or a trend or a runaway or whatever you want to call it, a spike, that means the market's moving. It's starting to pick up some steam. Now, what's interesting about this, and this is probably one of my favorite of these seven uh, ways of reading candles, this is probably my favorite, and the reason why is because, actually, let's do this test right now. How many people, <clears throat> you know what? We're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to choose another one because you already know the answer. So I'm gonna find another chart here, and we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did here. Okay, and we're gonna, but we're gonna do somewhere around here. Okay, I'll find a chart. Okay, all right. So now what I want to do here is zoom in. Okay, and what I want you to do is tell me. Okay, what I want you to do is tell me, based on this chart, so I'm going to just advance the chart by hitting the F12 key, one candle at a time. And what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for a candle to print away from the recent price action. This one's actually starting to do that. But we haven't quite done it yet. We're on the Aussie Yen 4-hour chart. I want to see a candle get away from the recent price action. Okay, here we go. All right. So this candle has printed away from the recent price action. Again, how do we see that? We take the, the majority of this candle here, if I extend it to the left, now the, the, the bit up at the top didn't print in a unique area of the chart, but this part certainly did. And I can extend, extend it all the way back to this candle right here. Okay, This candle is November 2011, and this one's um, back in December. So four-hour chart. 
I would say this is printed as a unique area on the chart. So given what you see right now on the chart, how many people here say when you see this, you want to sell? How many people here say sell based on what you see right here? The candles moved away from the recent price action, so you want to sell. Pan says no. Wait for a pullback. Peter says no. No, I would expect a pullback first, says Phil. Okay, let me ask the question another way. How many people here think the market's going to go down? How many people think that the market's going to start trending down? And you want to sell because you think the market's going to start trending down. You're only allowed to vote. <laughs> if, you, if you want to sell, send a D through to, for down, okay? If you want to sell, hit D for down. And if you want to buy, hit U for up. Okay, so let's see your votes. D for down, U for up. D, 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 wow. One U. Phil, Peter, U. U says two cars. Everyone said D except for like three people. <laughs> I love the way that Pan, Pan refuses to vote. You withheld your vote. <laughs> okay, Jimmy says up. Okay, so... The reason why this is interesting is that uh, what happens when you see a candle that prints away from recent price action is that trend traders who like to jump in on the trend, they, they will generally look to go in the direction of this candle. In other words, they would like to sell. So those trend traders will generally see this and they'll go, okay, I'm going to sell. I'm going to get in on this. It's going to start going. It's going to at least go down to here, maybe even break through it and go further. And then counter trend traders, when they see this, they go, oh, it's gone too far. It has to snap back. So let's see what happens here. I don't really know the answer to this. It's the reason why I chose this chart, because I, I didn't want you guys to know what was going to happen. Turns out it did trade lower, but then it gave us a kangaroo tail. Oh, and then it gave us a, 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 an inverted one in the other direction, and then went up. So uh, in a way, you're both right. The, the market did fall, went towards this level, didn't quite get there, kangaroo tailed off of it, and then started trading higher. So it did, in fact, reverse, but not before first printing that kangaroo tail. So I just wanted to see what was going to happen there. So that's the fifth principle here about reading price action, which is to compare the um, current candle to the previous candle to see if it sticks out. Does The question is, does the candle stick out? And this candle right here did stick out, and that's what we see. Let's see if we can actually find another one here. We do have two more things to go over, but I just want to see if we can find another one. Here's another one. It does stick out here. You can see this candle does, in fact, stick out uh, this much. And then it hits this candle right here. So this much of the candle does stick out all the way back to here. So it's not really ideal because it's not a large percentage of the candle that sticks out. And then it starts to fall. So the trend traders would have been okay here because it, it did, in fact, go lower. And then it came back up. Ah, these, this candle stuck, stuck out, didn't it? Right here, there's another one. It stuck out and printed above all these candles here. This one even better, all these candles. And that's what you'll see during a trend is that the candles will tend to stick out. You will get candles inside of the big ones once in a while, but then, then it will continue onward. And that's what trends often look like. Okay, so that is our principle number five. So principle number six, how to read price action. Um, the number six principle is that the percentage of wiki candles or the number of wiki candles that you see on the chart are important. So why does the percentage of wiki candles come into play here? Why is that important? So we're basically just counting wiki candles. When we see, let's, I'll just continue on. Here's one that sticks out. That one really sticks out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this chart forward and see for wiki, if we can find some wiki candles here. 
Um, here are some wicky candles here. Nice wicks on either side. Very tiny candles, though. Ideally, what we want to see are candles like this during an extension. And these wicks here tell us that the market's starting to lose some steam here. See this wick right here? It went higher, but then it closed lower. It went higher, but then it closed lower. It finally closed near the high, and then it just printed a bearish candle. This, to me, is a classic exhaustion, and I would look for this market to go lower. It did go lower for a couple of candles, and then finally it fell. It made another, tried to make a double top, actually, but couldn't quite do it, and then it went lower. So that is, is the sixth principle, which is if we see a lot of wiki candles, what does that mean? Wiki candles equals, wiki candles equals no momentum. The market's running out of steam. It's losing the momentum. The wicks are telling us something. Market can't do that anymore. Look at these wicks that started popping up over here. That's a really good one right there. That's a great one right there. Telling us that the market is starting to lose steam on this down move and it goes back up. Same thing here. It fell, but then it gave us these wicky candles telling us what? The market couldn't go any lower. It tried, it tried, and then whap, it went back up. And if you see a lot of wicky candles, you know the market is losing momentum. Okay. Yeah, it's running into trouble. Uh, you can look at it either way, Gam. If, if the market is printing wiki candles, it could be because it's up against support and resistance, but it also could be because um, there's not enough momentum to push it higher or lower. Um, either way, it can't get through a barrier. Either the barrier might be that there aren't enough traders to keep it going, or that there are other traders on the other side. So, for example, when the market hits a support level, all of the buyers are coming in, so it can't break through that support. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be that all the sellers are, are pulling out of the market. It could be that the buyers are jumping in. Um, actually, um, yeah, okay, I'll leave it at that. I, I, don't, I could get really in-depth into that, but let's just stop right there. Okay, so that is um, the sixth principle. If you see lots of wiki candles, you know that the market's slowing down. If you see few wiki candles, you know that there's follow through in the market, that there's push in the market, and that it can go further. Okay? But when you start to see these wicks, here we here we go. Wick, wick. You start to see these wicks here, we know, okay, there isn't much follow through here. The market's starting to die out. And then you see wicks on the other side start to tell us that the market's not really going anywhere. Okay, now we see a strong candle. And now it goes back up and takes out that high over here. In fact, it took out both of these highs over here. So that's what wicks tell us. A lot of wiki candles tells us the market's slowing down. Often you'll see them before you see a reversal signal in the markets. All right, last thing is, what did the market do the last time it touched a zone? This is absolutely critical. The last time the market hit a zone, what did it do? Now, let's, let's actually look at this chart. Uh, as an example, the last time, well, the, the yen pairs are just so strong. Let's look at something that's got a little bit more, you know, it's a little bit more normal, I guess, or whatever. Um, how about the euro pound? Okay. What did the euro pound do the last time you hit a zone? Here's this one on the daily euro pound. It came down to this zone. It hit it right here, right? And... It hit it, and it bounced. It hit it with basically one, maybe you count this candle, but I would probably only count this candle as a touch, and it bounced. What does that tell us? This is, number seven is, behavior of the most recent touch. Behavior of the most recent touch. I never know how to spell behavior, if I should spell it the American way, which I learned, or uh, the English and Australian way, but I've just adopted the the uh, Queen's English here. All right, so the behavior of the most recent touch tells us what? It tells us that the market here on this most recent touch came up, came down here, tagged it with one candle, and then moved away immediately. That tells us that the market reversed. That tells us it's in reversal mode, okay? But actually, I would argue that this touch is not the most recent touch. That's the second most recent touch. The most recent touch is right here, 
and the behavior here tells us something completely different. We have four candles, one, two, three, four candles that stuck right on the zone, and so that tells us that the market is likely to break out and trade higher. Remember, this is an old principle that comes up in naked forex trading, which is this idea. Multiple touches in quick succession equals breakout. If the market hits a support and resistance level, and it hits it over and over again very quickly, say five out of seven candles, or six out of nine candles, or seven out of ten candles, it hits a level, it's probably going to break out. Will it, does it work 100% of the time? No. But if it hits it, and it hits it, and it hits it, it's usually going to crack it. And it, it might, sometimes what it'll do is it'll hit it, it'll hit it, it'll hit it, and then it'll, it'll move away for a bit, and then come back and hit it and break that, that next time. Uh, but if it hits it and then moves away immediately, that often means a double bottom, double top, or um, just a reversal like we had right here. Now, the market could actually come back down here and double bottom where it did right here. It could still do that, but these touches right here were screaming breakout. When you see all these one, two, three, four candles right on this level, and the market can't get away from it, it's still stuck there, then finally the next candle broke through, the next candle came back down and touched it from above with the wick, which is very common, and now we're actually trading even higher. So that is the most recent touch principle. What did the market do last time it hit a zone? Did it touch it and then move away immediately, or did it touch it and repeatedly slam into it? Because if it's repeatedly slamming into it in quick succession over and over again, rather quickly, it's going to break out, or it'll most likely break out. And if it just touches it and then bends rather quickly and moves away, it's probably going to bounce, and it's, it's probably not going to come back. Or at the very least, if it comes back, it'll double bottom or double top, right? So does that make sense, everybody? Thanks for spending time here. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> Carlos says, so usually price action at crucial um, areas is a good indicator of market direction. Um, uh, I wouldn't say that, Carlos. What I'm saying is that um, as, a, as a support and resistance trader, as a naked forex trader, where the most important spots on the chart to me are those areas where the market has repeatedly reversed, also known as resistance or support, okay? Those are the most important spots on the chart to me. And so if those spots are the most critical spots, I want to know what happens when the market gets there. When the market gets there, is it bouncing hard and moving away, or is it hanging out? And what you will tend to, what I have found is that when the market tends to hang out in an area, it usually means it's going to break out. It usually means it's going to break out. If it starts hanging out in an area repeatedly, like here's a classic right here. All of these boom, 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 boom touches here, and then bam, it goes higher. Um, we can do a whole webinar just on this idea, but we've, we've talked about it at other, at other webinars. But when the market comes and it just tags it right here and moves away rather quickly, that's a pretty good sign. You'll see it on the line chart. See how sharp that angle is right there? That's a pretty sharp angle. And then it just fell. So I hope that helps, folks. I hope you can use these seven, seven principles in your trading. At the very least, you will recognize them when you, when you look at them. It doesn't take a lot. It just takes a little bit of practice. I hope this helps. Um, thanks, Ian. I'm glad to hear that. We did just make it, Boyke. Thanks a lot, Phil. I'm glad that you like it, Pan. Brilliant, says Pan. That's great. I, 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 uh, I'm glad you like it, George. Thanks, folks. I wish you happy trading. Um, we'll see you next week, same time. I'm glad you like it. See you guys. Thanks so much for your time. Bye, folks. Thank you.